guide into discoveries, coming to you live from the heart of America to around the globe via the World Wide Web, satellite, and podcast. Let's journey together into the realms of the known, to the unknown, in search of enlightenment, knowledge, and truth. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this beautiful planet Earth. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca, broadcast right here by Project Camelot TV. And welcome, everybody. We're going to have a really, really great show. I got a few announcements to make um, before I forget them tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, I believe this will be my last show of 2016. Uh, I will be returning again in 2017. Sounds like a really far away, but it's not just a few weeks. Um, so if I do not get an opportunity to share with everyone, because I have a tendency to get wrapped up in the conversations with my guest, and we have a fabulous guest tonight. We'll talk about him in just a minute. I want to wish each and every one of you the best holiday season. Merry Christmas and the best New Year ever. Um, I hope that we all can find some peace and we find harmony and love within us and we share that throughout this season and certainly for the rest of the year each and every day. So I want to thank each and every one of you for being a, a participant and and sharing in these shows uh, with all these fabulous guests and as well as with my fabulous engineer, uh, Brian, who works behind the scene very tires, tirelessly. And he's very dedicated to his work, and he does the, the one of the most fabulous jobs putting up all of the interviews, on most all of the interviews, I should say, on Project Camelot TV. We're going to talk a little bit about Brian's work a little bit later on in the show as well. But I wanted to get to our guest tonight. His, tonight, my guest is Tobias, and I know there's a lot of you in the chat room tonight uh, waiting for Tobias to come on. Uh, he has uh, been on a couple of times on the show talking about the ET languages, and tonight we're going to venture into that a little bit and about Tobias's kind of leave of absence, shall we say, from the public arena, and we're going to get into some other interesting topics such as quantum healing. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about dreams. We're going to talk a little bit about all kinds of wonderful healing techniques and other interesting things. It's really going to get in depth and we never know where this conversation will lead us. Tobias and I just kind of have this thing that we do and it just kind of goes wherever it goes. But if you do have a question about any of the topics tonight that are being talked about, please do write them down in the chat room, but place them all in cap so that we know, so Brian can then pass those questions on to us and we can get them answered for you right on air. So without further ado, let me uh, let me introduce to you Tobias. Good evening, Tobias. What a wonderful time it is and what a wonderful night it is to have you here. Ah, good evening, Rebecca. It's great to be here. I sure appreciate it. We always have a lot of fun. <laughs> I, yeah, we we certainly have no boring conversations between any of us. <laughs> That's for sure. That's and you for know, sure. I, I think I want to tell everyone, um, you were the one, you and uh, another lady, Sherry, uh, that helped with the writing of my book, The Great Revealing. And for those of you who are interested in purchasing that, you can go to my website and do that. And part of the proceeds go back to Tobias to help for pay for his absolute dedication to getting that book out. Uh, we spent many, many hours in sessions getting the information, and Tobias spent many, many hours uh, putting it all together and compiling it. So uh, if you're interested, go to the website journeyswithrebecca.com and order it. And uh, I send Tobias his money uh, once a month, uh, are the proceeds uh, from the book that goes to him. So all of it helps um, because we are all doing the jobs that we do, and we do them be not only because we love them, but we also volunteer, in a sense, our time and our energy and uh, we certainly don't get paid for it except for by some of the work that we do create and some of the sessions that we do. And um, that being said, uh, I want to turn it back over to Tobias because, Tobias, you want to talk a little bit about your absence, so to speak, from the air. We did tell everyone that you were going to come back on and then things happened. And that's what you're here to do is to talk a little bit about that and how things have changed and expanded for you. Absolutely, Rebecca. So... Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, everybody that's sort of followed my work in the last year or two knows that I've been 
um, out there and promoting the, the languages and the different uh, things that um, stem off of the languages. Uh, there's so many things that come out of them, you know. Um, and I've been out there putting stuff on YouTube for like over a year and a half now, I think. And, uh, of course, the ET Languages website and putting as much information out there and trying to reach as many people as possible just, just to make them aware that there's different information um, available because so many people have been going uh, around with the, the, the so-called light languages and things like that and there's a lot of misunderstandings and, and confusions about those things plus just a, a lot of interest in, in people wanting to understand what's happening with themselves more, right? Exactly. So I spent, so I spent a, a lot of time in, including going, going on your show at least a couple of times there. I'm giving more information about what this all is about and everything. Um, so really, um, this summer I took a step back because I wanted to sort of focus on things and rehone my my intention from the beginning, which was never to do anything more than to, to educate people and then to be able to work with people really to get through to the things that stem off of the languages, right? So, I mean, you and I were talking about this before, Rebecca. I mean, there's a lot of times um, with subjects like these, uh, it could be ET languages, it can be psychic abilities, it can be, gosh, so many different things. People want uh, these things not only to experience these things, but sometimes people want these things to be proven to them, right? Exactly. And and we could we could we could honestly we could be we could take the rest of our lives trying to prove certain things to people and then we would never get anywhere. So this is really the, was the focus of my sort of little bit of a step back from the public eye um, this summer and in, in the last six months because I really started to focus on working on in individual people uh, behind the scenes doing work with different groups and people um, individually rather than try to entertain anybody's idea about proving things to them. And you certainly know what that's like because you're a psychic <laughs> yourself. <laughs> and you know, you know that we really could, we really could spend the rest of our lives just trying to give people that confirmation, but there's nothing better than them getting the confirmation themselves through their own experiences. You know, and that that's an, a really uh, profound statement to make is because the individual themselves, when you are one-on-one -on -one with that individual, uh, you're able to connect with them, and uh, you know I, I certainly have been able to help people get to that point where they're able to open up and, you know, tune into their own psychic abilities or intuition, whatever you want to call it. I, you know, used to train people to do that, but there is something to be said about confirmation when you're doing the one-on-one -on -one thing, and they say, "Oh wow, that's what I thought was going on, or that's what I knew what was going on, but I wasn't sure, or whatever." However, that confirmation comes in, and mm. it's very interesting because they have to invite you in, as opposed to when we're in this public format like we are now. We have people yeah. out there that we're not in their field, so to speak, and we're going to get into that whole quantum stuff here a little bit later, into the field uh, uh, idea and premise. But when when somebody is just listening to something and they're not invested in the information, so to speak, we're not in their field and they're not in our field. They're simply mm -hmm. just listening, and it doesn't always make sense to them what's being said or what's being presented. Doesn't make exactly. it any less real or valid for those that do understand it and, and do want to be a part of it. Uh, exactly. You know that reminds me of something that I remember you talking about years ago when it talks. Uh, we were talking about communication and how how as a psychic you can see you can literally see when you um, deliver something verbally. You can literally see sometimes when it literally falls short because they're. There's a, there's a there's a rift in their field or something. There's something that's preventing them from accepting the information. And sometimes that can be within them, or something around them, or something completely outside of them. So yeah, it's it's always a fascinating thing to look at in in this sort of perspective, right? That's exactly right. So Tobias, in your in your ET languages, and you were you were being very very because I want to I want to drill down into this a little bit so that there's no more conjecture out there as to what's going on. Um, when when you came out and were forward with it, you were presented afterwards with information from your own set of those um, unseen individuals, entities, mm -hmm. um, that communicated with you that they weren't real happy with the work that you were doing because you were being too knowledgeable 
as far as, you know, in the public eye with the information, there were some entities or parts of entities, you know, races, groups, whatever you want to call them, that were not happy with what you were doing. Um, mm-hmm. And not because it you were doing anything wrong, like, in other words, the information you were sharing was obviously right on the head or it wouldn't bother to anyone. <laughs> Gets exactly, into speaking yeah. what you're talking about, which is confirmation, right? It must have been doing some of it, right? Because right. they're really mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I want to talk a little bit about the conversation we had a few weeks ago about that. I want to share this portion with you about this and with the audience, rather, because the those entities, the reason is that we don't remember or don't speak those languages anymore is because those languages um, were taken away. The Call them dead languages, right? Isn't that what we said? They're like a dead language. But if you started speaking some of the languages to those, and here again, uh, for years and years, I've been saying they walk amongst us. There's all kinds of species walking amongst humanity. And I use that term separately from the entities that are off-worlders that came here. Some were left here, some didn't want to go, some were abandoned here, whatever the case may be. And they're not the ones that want to be rediscovered. If people looked at their next-door neighbor and knew that they were an a off-worlder, an alien or an extraterrestrial in human-looking form, it would freak people out. And they certainly... Yeah tried their very best to blend in or to hide. So if you start speaking the language that they know, then they feel compelled to answer because it's a language that they're not used to speaking anymore themselves. So it's like their home, right? We all know what that feels like. When, Man, I miss home. You know, we get that ache. So there's an idea here that they don't wish to be discovered, and that's one of the reasons you were kind of admonished not to be out in the public eye because they did not want themselves to be rediscovered. Would, is that an accurate kind of compilation there? Yeah, it certainly is, Rebecca, and it's really nice the way you put that, because it's just so succinct. It really is. I mean, I mean, it's exactly the way you put it. I mean, you know, it, it reminded me of something that happened just recently that's an entirely different thing, but it's sort of the same concept. So I did a, a private session with a, a wonderful lady, um, uh, in on the other side of the world, actually, um, recently. And after the session, she was very excited, and, and you know, she she was excited to do some more uh, some other time. And and so I actually said to her, I said to her, well, that's great. Well, if you know, if you don't mind, maybe go on to my website, um, and you know, write a little thing, and that you really enjoyed it or whatever, so other people can sort of see what it's all about and and see that it's uh, it's worth it, right? And and her response. She was just the sweetest lady, but her response was, well, you know, I would love to do that for you, but the thing is, if I do that, then other people are going to see. It could be my family. It could be my friends. <laughs> and, uh-huh. and it was actually the first time, it was the first time that I, you know, it, that I realized, well, yeah, because honestly, here's Tobias. It's very simple for me. I mean, people know me. I, I mean, it's like I'm out of the ET closet, really. <laughs> people know me all over the world, right? And... It's easy for me to, you know, have stuff on in Facebook or online or whatever. I mean, it's just I made the choice some time ago. It's out there. There's nothing I can do about it, even if I, if even if I wanted to. But for other people, it's a different ball game. It's a totally different ball game. Other people will see, and it can make them very uncomfortable. So in that respect, it's very similar to what you were describing there with people. In a very real way, I know this is hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around, but exactly what you said, Rebecca, there are other species within human bodies all over this planet. I know I deal with them every single day, (laughs) and um, and you, I'm sure you do too. And this is something that would be very, uh, not only frightening to uh, a lot of, I I would say the majority of people would be like uh, very frightened or put off at the thought that there's something concealing itself, right? And then on the flip side of that, as you said, there'd be people... Um, that don't want to be, you know, discovered that absolutely know what they are. And it sort of goes into that whole topic about break-off societies and breakaway societies and right. sort of the television, movie, and TV kind of thing. People don't feel very comfortable about that topic if they're not a part of it, right? 
It doesn't right. take away. It doesn't take away from what the humans are. It doesn't take away from other groups. It just means that there are different individuals, different groups and realities right here. And uh, it's something that I don't know how eventually um, everybody's sort of going to come to terms with that, but it's going to have to happen because I truly believe um, that it's something that's going to be in the future. And certainly it's something that was in the past. Well, you know, we we had a long conversation about that, and you confirmed the things that I was told, you know, to tell you. And we have to go back to the story of Babylon, when mm -hmm. the languages were confused and we no longer understood each other. And I believe that prior to that whole Babylon thing, that there was also a, a, a kind of a cleansing or clearing of the languages that made the Babylon um, scenario seem very authentic to me um, because all these ET languages, there are many people out there that understand it. Um, even though I didn't understand verbatim what you were saying, I got the concept and the gist of some of the languages that you and Jack were speaking at that time, you know, sharing yes. to the audience. Yeah. Um, which tells me somewhere there's a knowledge there that I've not tapped into, you know, information. We all come in here with amnesia. doesn't mean we can't get to the information. Um, yes. And there's a, there was a recognition there. So it makes me, I really feel as if that language is, those languages weren't meant for us to be speaking because it's really not part of the human race, the languages aren't. That those langu these languages that we have been created for us to use was really to designate the differences between humanity, the humans, and the non-humans, other species. That's Absolutely. What seemed, that's what seemed to make sense to me. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You know, I think I once alluded to something very similar to that in another one of your programs, because I said, you know, there are some of the languages that I will not speak publicly simply because... To me, they, not just to me, but to the species themselves, they're actually sacred. They're sacred. They're not to be put on a pedestal. They're not to be spoken in public. They're, they're really a sacred part of, of their in, integral, um, society, um, their personalities, culture. their culture. Absolutely. So yeah, they're absolutely languages that I, I simply wouldn't speak to others unless it was those people. Right. Yeah, so that's very, very true. And as, as for the reference to the Tower of Babel, this is another thing that you and I spoke with recently when we were talking about doing this program tonight. And that is, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a very serious thing to me, but at the same time, there's humor to it. It's funny because, honestly, here comes, you know, let's put it this way. So here's, you know, thousands of years ago, um, in a time, in a place, in a situation that we can't even begin to imagine, really. I can't even begin to imagine or wrap my head around the Tower of Babel time when, when every, everyone, all the humans were speaking one language and they're all communicating and trying to build this, you know, build this network basically that could, you know, reach, you know, out into the universe and things like this. I mean, the whole story of some great force, some great power, whether it be God, whether it be aliens, whether it be other species or groups of species, whether it be uh, whatever it may be, some, something came together in a very real way, and I believe this absolutely to be true. Something came together and determined, for whatever reasons, it is unsafe. It is unsafe for this group of people to achieve or reach certain types of power. And we're going to slow that process down because of whatever reasons. These are obviously great forces because they could literally go into the minds of the people on the planet and separate them from their own language, their own communication. So literally, if we look at it in that perspective, can you imagine, can you imagine like thousands of years later, here stumbles Tobias into the society, into the world, into the into our time period, and starts babbling in these languages and explaining different things, as Jack and I certainly have. And, and this is part of what made me take a step back um, this summer and, and refocus on this aspect of it as well, because I realized it's not my place to come out 
and suddenly start reversing something that was put into effect by very important or for very important reasons, I would assume, and some very powerful um, decisions that were made thousands of years ago. I can't just stumble in and start, you know, spewing everything about everything um, because that would be uh, dangerous not only to myself, that would be dangerous to other people. And that would be um, something that I certainly wouldn't want to do. So, yeah, I mean, when, when I looked at it in that perspective, it sort of meshed very well with the fact that, you know, it was never my intention to prove anything. Uh, my intention was to work with people and try to connect their, their own pasts and their own abilities to connect with their own understandings. Uh, and, you know, in, in, in all honesty, in all honesty, in many, many cases, those are people that are other species that you were alluding to a few minutes ago. In many cases, uh, as crazy as it may sound to most of the world, in many cases I have people um, that are from other worlds um, that reside within a human physical form and they speak these languages sometimes and, and other times are here for readings and sessions and assistance to connect their own left and right brain and consciousness and memories of the past just like anybody else would. So it's a... Uh, I think that sort of sums it sums up what I've been sort of going through in the last six months, and uh, 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 puts it into a bit of bigger perspective. Yeah, and I think if people just stop and thought about that, that that they would certainly understand the reluctance that you would have of continuing that practice of being public in all of that. So. Uh, one of your statements reminded me of something that you wanted to talk about, which is the left brain, right brain. Mm -hmm. You spoke about wanting to talk about that. <clears throat> do you remember? Yes, I sure do. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, here's, it's funny, too, because when I think about it, um, with with all the people, like, I've, I just so, I just want to say right now, I'm so appreciative for every single person in the last two years and, and beyond that's been, you know, following me and been so supportive of me. I have so many people all over the world through Facebook and, and ET Languages website and different things like that. It's just so supportive and they're so interested and supportive. And I just could never, I, I just wanted to, you know, <laughs> make some mention that I'm just always, every day I'm so appreciative of that, every single day. Um, one of the things that that I talk about um, is that, again, the left and right brain, it's funny because even though people have known me for the languages for quite a while, um, it's funny because a lot of people say, well, what do you do, right? So, I mean, I've sort of had my hand in so many different little things and there's different parts of me and my abilities and stuff that so many people don't even know I'm a psychic. People don't know, you know, uh, I do coaching. They don't know I do different techniques and, and processes for the mind and, and different things like that. They don't even they didn't even know about that because it was so focused on the languages, right? So yeah, when it comes to um, connecting to our past or connecting our own our own intuitive abilities, things like that, it, it comes to the the things that you're familiar with, Rebecca, because you're a, such an incredible psychic yourself and have been forever. Um, so you and I were actually talking about the left brain and the right brain, okay? So um, the thing that's fascinating to me that people don't don't always understand is that when we're creating thoughts and doing reasoning processes with our minds, uh, whether it be math or, or or something like that, we're literally using the left physical part of our brain, right? So in many cases, uh, when we're doing those processes, we're creating the thought within the brain. And people often find it quite surprising to realize when it comes to intuition and, and psychic abilities and remote viewing, uh, remote healings, energy work, information streams, all of the things that we deal with every day, it's the right brain and we're actually not creating those that information within our minds so much as we're actually learn we've learned to open our minds, that side of our brain, open it so it it is then able to receive information from outside. Have you ever thought of it that way, Rebecca? You know, um, the left brain, right brain function that you're talking about there was something that um, not only did I learn how to do it, but I also learned how to teach other people. I call it marrying the left and the right brain. 
because mm. normally they're at odds with each other. One is your logical, reasonal, you know, reasoning, uh, this reality, you know, rooted information, uh, what you can see, feel, touch, you know, in this physical world. And then the other side of it is that, which is what I call the unseen world, which is the feelings, the visions, you know, you said it, remote viewing, the psychic jumping in on timelines, your dream sequence. There's a way of bringing those two worlds together. And it took me a long time to do that because I either functioned out of the right side or I functioned out of the left side. But I didn't function in the middle, which is the balance between the two. And you have to open up the waves, the pathways, the doorways, whatever you want to call it, between the left brain and the right brain. And I called it a marriage because a marriage is supposed to be harmonious and work together. That's the idea of marriage, right? So if you can marry your right brain and your left brain together, you become a more fully functional being. And you can begin to see opportunities that you didn't see before because they come out of the right brain and not the left brain because the left brain is only looking at these certain pieces that it's already familiar with or pieces of information, right? I can put this together because I have a, uh, a hammer and a nail and a piece of wood and I can pound them together and make this thing. But then what if you don't have the hammer and you don't have the nail, but you want to make this thing? Well, that's where sometimes where the right brain comes in. It then begins to explore possibilities outside of what you've learned in the physical reality. And then you begin to go, oh, well, I can use this screwdriver and a screw for it instead. So you begin to find different things that you can apply that came from one side of your brain, but it filters into the logical reasoning reasoning physical plane existence of the left brain function it can work they both work in unison and when we we learn that we're not battling that unseen world we're working in conjunction with it not dismissing it because it's a part of who we are exactly you know it's interesting because i remember you know, you know, anybody that's ever heard my stories knows that, you know, back in the 1990s is when I first saw psychics. Um, the first time I ever saw a psychic was in the 1990s. And again, that was when I sort of explained the story when they started telling me that I'd become one of the people that actually understand these languages and can communicate with all things they said back then. Three of them said that sort of in a row within two or three years. Um, then, I mean, I... I've known you for quite a long time, Rebecca, and I remember you talking years and years ago about information streams, mm -hmm. about connecting to information streams and following them and, and seeing where they go. And, uh, and I remember back then I could never even wrap my head around it. I felt so dumb sometimes because, you know, I could understand at the time that there's a part of my own history that, that I'm missing and a part of my own abilities that I'm missing, right? Um, but I just couldn't get there from here. And, and thankfully, and you know, this is part of the story that Jack and I came out with um, when we're, and, and part of the reason we came out with it when we first uh, started doing shows with you uh, last year. Um, because, you know, I think in a large way, um, not only what we were doing then, um, but what, what I'm doing now um, is really trying to give the other people the abilities to have these same experiences. You know, a lot of what I talked about uh, that we talked about really was that, you know, sometimes it's so difficult to sort of grasp onto something until you actually experience it for yourself, right? So, I mean, a lot of what I sort of teach and coach about, honest, honestly, a lot of it is actually just telling stories and explaining how things work. Right. So we talk about the marriage between the left and the right brain, and often people are like, or people expect that there'll be some you know, magical practice, not that there isn't, but they expect that the only way would be some sort of magical practice to connect them together better, when in fact, the very act of thinking in a different way literally creates pathways to those experiences that people are seeking. And you know what, I, I know this not because it's a concept, I know this because, again, of my own, my own experiences over the years, right? Well, and the very fact that we're having this conversation and people are thinking about what we're saying is enough to open them up. 
Exactly. That's all it, that's all it takes is sharing the information. And people go, well, exactly. maybe there is something to that. Maybe there is. And then <gasps> that maybe becomes, well, there is at some point down the road. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, it's funny because back then, years and years ago, I mean, when I first met Jack and he started, you know, communicating, communicating different um, concepts and ideas and explanations to myself, I knew intuitively somewhere in the right brain, somewhere in my subconscious mind, it was there. I knew. Um, I mean, I certainly had the benefit of the psychics in the 90s, you know, telling me, oh, you know, this is going to happen. So I was always aware of watching for these things to actually come into my reality. But uh, in addition to that, like I said, I mean, there's part of me, absolutely, I felt you have to go with your instinct. And this is something that's bred out of most people or chemicalized <laughs> out of yeah. most people or genetically <laughs> modified out of most people. You know, it's hard. It's very hard, but we have to we have to get back to our instinct, and certainly that is something that I will forever be in debt um, uh, for Jack helping me so much with, and I'm in, you know, and uh, and it's something that I just enjoy so much in working with other people doing absolutely. Well, let's 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 talk about Jack for just a minute because there's been a couple of people that have kind of asked about him. So, how would you like to share the information? about what Jack's up to these days. Well, Jack is doing his own thing. I actually haven't talked to him for quite a while because we're just so busy doing our own things. Uh, I haven't even got an update uh, from him, but he's doing uh, certainly Jack-type things that I would expect. I, I have no doubt that it has to do with uh, the things that we're talking about while probably in different ways, just as, just as I'm doing them in different ways myself now. Well, we wish him well, and uh, when you speak with him again or hear from him again or what have you, just let him know that uh, he's very well loved and missed, and uh, we wish him the best there is in this world. Absolutely. I have I have no doubt that that's what everybody wishes. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> well, absolutely. The, the, the languages. I want to get to the languages for a minute because it's going to go into some other areas that we wanted to, to talk about. During mm -hmm. the course of you exploring these languages, these ET languages, um, not only did you learn about your own psychic abilities and, and channeling and, and hearing and seeing guides and energy and beings and places, but it also gave you some insight into um, the quantum, as it were, the, the healing techniques, the aspects. And, you know... My my thing is is that that word healing denotes that people are ill or sick, and that's not always the case. Um, healing is just becoming more whole than what you were, in my opinion. Um, that's just my opinion because when we use that word and we think of it as a negative, oh, I have to heal you, means that something's broken, something doesn't work right. And that may be the case, but it's also way more than that. It means making you whole again. Well, whole is, is a concept that humans have that, well, as long as, you know, my, um, you know, my broken bones are healed and, you know, uh, my kidneys are no longer bothering me, I'm healed. Well, there's more to healing than just the physical self. It's also the spiritual, the mental, um, certainly the physical, but it also goes beyond that because, um, back in the 60s and 70s, the big thing was, man, you're standing in my space. Get out of my space. Or <laughs> your auric field. That's what they were talking about was the auric field. Well, we have a huge auric field, and it goes, you know, it connects to all things. I mean, that's it just is, whether you're aware of it or not. So you have this space when somebody gets too close to you, and you go, oh, my God, get away. You're in my space. I can't breathe, whatever the case may be. Or, oh, I like the way this one feels. They can stand in my space, right? So you, yeah. you, the, the languages themselves has opened you up to all these different concepts and all these different things. And we talk about this auric field, but we're also talking about what goes on beyond that auric field, which are now rediscovering, by the way, the chakra system was a seven major. Now they're saying there's 13. Well, there's actually quite a lot more than that. We've also begun to explore the idea that uh, when we're looking at astrology, they, they use it in the 12 houses. There was actually 22 houses, 22 being a very divine number, right, a master number. So there's a lot of things that we're rediscovering 
because we're ready for it. So we, if we're ready for it, we've, we need to just go out and just allow for the information to come forward and let ourselves just explore where it goes and maybe it takes us someplace we want. If not, then we turn our attention somewhere else. But in these fields that we were, I was talking about and the healing, there's some interesting things that you have discovered and I want you to kind of run with that whole premise of some of the things that you're currently doing when you're playing in the field. Absolutely. You know, it's really interesting because of the thought that came to my mind when you started talking about this was actually, what if evolution and healing are actually one and the same thing? Yeah. Because honestly, it's an ongoing process. And it's, it's, it's always um, interesting to me when I do one-on-ones with people because so often they say, okay, well, you know, thank you so much, and this was so awesome, and we had so much, you know, it was interesting and fun and all of these things and insightful. Um, then they say, do you think there'd be any sense in me coming back again? <laughs> 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 and really, I always express, my God, like, seriously, like, I do, quote, unquote, healing on myself every single day. Every single day, not just, you know, physical things, but as you alluded to, like emotional things, um, uh, we're, we are literally talking about the field again, because when it comes to this, you know, interdimensional, this, what's the word, Rebecca, this, this field, quantum. it's literally, it's quantum, literally, there's so much information in it. And again, it actually harkens back to what we we're talking about a few minutes ago when it comes to following energy streams. So we literally have this virtually unseen world, at least it's unseen for most people, that holds all of this information. It holds blueprints. It holds um, medical information. It, it holds so-called sickness. It, it holds good things. It, it, it can often be the dimension, so to speak, where um, there's implants, entities, really creepy crawly things, the things that affect people's energy. Um, there can be emotions, absolutely emotions. You know, um, and one of the things that is so fascinating to me about the quantum energy field, um, symbols. We can talk about, what's the word for it? Mm, it's going to escape me right now. Mm, fractals. That's mm. the word. Mm. Fractals. There's letters. There's alphabets. There's kanjis. There's um, all of these ancient uh, logos, really logos, that I find within people's fields. And... So it's, it's endlessly fascinating, especially when you examine what the energies and, and recordings within these systems actually do and what they are, right? So whether that's a, I'll give a couple of examples. So here we can have a blueprint, which is our genetic blueprint, which is telling us how to be whole and how to be what we actually are, right? And then on the other hand, in, 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 I want to say in every case, in every case, I've never seen someone without other things affecting their field. And I'm not fear mongering. I'm just trying to elaborate on this so that the people understand the effects of all of this, this, this sort of unseen world, right? Um, sometimes there's different logos and the things I, I, I was expressing there that actually have an effect and disturb the field. They sort of cause a rift in the reality of the field. And it can cause emotions that are negative or, or, or different things like that. So that's a, that's one of the most fascinating things for me, um, is sort of sensing out and seeing, uh, reading literally the information inside this, this quantum energy field. Um, again, I think, I mean, so often I say to people, look, I don't read things on the internet if I can help it. I don't read books if I can help it. I, I really don't. I literally try to avoid information from other sources, even on like the ancient past. I don't read things about Lemuria. I don't read things about Atlantis. I don't read things about the Anunnaki if I can help it, because because I I try not to let that sort of taint my information field. I would prefer to go in with my own mind, and and look at things myself and have my own experiences with these things, right? And, and this is really. Yeah, exactly, because this is really, I think it's been very beneficial to me over the years, because this is, you know, sort of brought me to what I do now and who I am. 
So I sort of, I think I'll keep that practice going. So a lot of the times when I talk about things, regardless of what it is, you know, people haven't heard about it in that sort of way before simply because it's something that I just experienced, right? It's not something that, that's out there on YouTube or, you know, all over the Internet. Um, sometimes these things are unique, and that's very exciting to me because I think we should all share our experiences um, mm -hmm. as much as we can, uh, you know. Well, there's a common, there's always a common thread when we do that. Oh, absolutely. It, tr it, it causes people to click, you know, click with different things and, and realize, oh, maybe I've had a similar experience or maybe I can follow that sort of uh, explanation or that experience that someone else has had into something myself where I apply it to my own life, right? Right. And that's really, really the benefit, one of the benefits of it. So, yeah. Yeah, well, now, absolutely. I, I've been remiss. Um, here, I've been kind of going back over what some of the things that we were going to talk about. One of the things that you wanted to do uh, was to talk about your energy boost and what you were going to do for the audience tonight. Oh, that's right, too. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, gosh, we could talk about, you know, I think I said to you, I think, you know, we could talk about this for hours and days, right? <laughs> so, so, I mean... By no means, if I blab blabber on about this and that, is it is it complete in any way? Because I literally could go on for days and days and days about these things. But in a nutshell, yeah, I mean, it's very exciting to me because oftentimes people haven't had the benefit of experiencing these things again. So even when it comes to, um, you know, a type of healing or a type of energy experience or or something like that. Um, a lot of people haven't had the experience. So I, what I've done tonight is I've sort of publicized, you know, um, that I have a draw going um, for people that previously registered for, for my newsletter. <laughs> there was a reason there, too. I wanted to get them involved, right? So I'm go. actually giving away, I'm actually giving away five, six-hour sessions of actually allowing people to feel um, connected to a chi device, a chi, so a chi, ki, prana, it's an energy device, right? And when we talk about the quantum field, this is what, this is what reality grows out of, right? When people talk about manifestation, whether that be physical things, whether it be their health, whether it be uh, anything, spiritual things, desires when when people talk about manifesting things it's going to use the chi field right chi field is is what you know the ancient people always used whether it be the egyptians and their pyramids or 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 civilizations far before them um you know we have the the asiatic the asian cultures that that absolutely know all about this types, these types of energies. So when you and I talk about the information field or, or the, the quantum energy field, this is all, these are all aspects of it. So um, I really want, you know, again, in my, you know, desire to sort of get out there as much as I can and help people to experience these things themselves. I'm giving away five of these sessions and, uh, Really, it's just a, a very, very healing thing. It doesn't involve me much. I literally connect them to energy device, an energy device, a very safe, very calm and healthy energy device from a distance. So I'm giving six of the or five of those six-hour sessions away tonight. Excellent. Well, you, uh, are you announcing that here? Or is that something you're going to announce through the newsletter? Or how are you doing that? That's something that I'm going to actually literally do the draw for live on your show tonight. Woohoo! <laughs> I didn't put my name in. Um, <laughs> I almost did, but I didn't. <laughs> oh, you should have, darn it. <laughs> then I could have told everybody how it was. Well, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's, um, I want to, I want to kind of explore this whole, uh, quantum thing because it's really where, um, and fractals, interesting concept, by the way. I've had three experiences with fractals, mm. um, and the first time it happened, I had no idea what it was I was looking at. I hadn't heard the word ever. I'm, I'm, you and I share a commonality here, which is people say, "Well, hey, have you heard this, or have you read about that, or have you?" No, I don't. I don't go and explore that because the information that I get, I want to get it from where it comes from, not because 
uh, my brain has been colluded with other things that could murk yeah. it up because our still our brains do have a tendency to disseminate the material. Now, when I am listening to somebody, if I'm listening to an audio, um, I listen with a different ear. I don't go in with just trying to absorb all the information. I go in and I listen to it based on does how it feels to me. Does it feel like it's accurate? And I don't mean necessarily for me, you know, it's, in other words, it's a BS meter, right? There's a lot of people out there that, that serve up a lot of BS, and it, it really has no, they say a lot, but they're, they're really not saying anything when they say it. You understand what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so, and then there's a lot of people that when they do share their information, I'm listening to it, I go, oh, yeah. And then I will get information from there from my own sources that either confirm it or share my side of it. So I have a whole different kind of, I don't know, uh, procedure, I guess is a good way of saying it, that I do, I go through before I listen to somebody else's material. Um, I, I step back from, you know, the me that's here that, you know, interacts in the physical world and instead I kind of step outside of myself and I allow the information to come in without allowing it to influence me. Does that make sense? You know what? I think you're talking about the left brain filter. You're getting out sure. of the way of the left brain filter and allowing right. the information to come in to you from the right brain. Exactly. Yep. So these these fields that we're, we're, we, we play in um, are, are quite extraordinary because uh, when you're sitting down with somebody one-on-one -on -one and and Notably, I have to say, is that most people, especially on the Internet, that's listening to this show, looks at me as just a radio show host because I've been doing it now for, what, 15 years or something, a uh, long time. Um, but it was because I put the show together as a format for others that had like or similar ideas so that the information could be shared. That was the whole format, that one person didn't have the information that everybody has a little piece of the puzzle why not let everybody's pieces of the puzzle come out as many as you can and let that information come out it becomes non-mainstream allows people to explore the unseen world through various other people in the way that they present their material so that's the reason for the show was really as a basis to share information because one person just can't be the spokesperson for everything. There's this kind of the ridiculous <laughs> when you think about it that way. There's seven billion people in here, right? Yeah. So, but before then, I was I was known for not only my readings but also my healing sessions. You know, my my uh, uh, energy work that I did with people, and I've, I've studied crystals and all kinds of energy techniques. I'm a Reiki master, but I'm also uh, a healer that heals through just the psychic awareness of somebody sitting down in front of them. I help I help them see if somebody has to come to you for a healing because you are not really healing them unless they allow themselves to be healed. If a person wants to remain sick, they're going to remain sick no matter what you do. All you can do is give them the information and they can do with it what they want to, right? Um, um, we have a question that came in. I'm going to I'm going to get to the question here in just a minute. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to share with people is that uh, you are doing sessions, and I hope that people will go forward and contact you for, for private sessions, and um, mm -hmm. you certainly can benefit from that financially as well as spiritually, because I feel like every time I touch somebody like that, that I share a space with somebody like that, their field, that, that there's something in it for me as well. There's something about yes. connecting. It's just it's just a healing process for the person that's actually kind of administering the, the procedures, right? Yeah, um, it, it's, absolutely. It's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me, and that just becomes a win-win situation for everyone. And then that person that gets that from you will then spread that to somebody else because they're feeling really well. They're feeling better. They're feeling good. They're exuberant, so their energy in itself as they go. We talked about the aura field. So you go through the grocery store, you're 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 sprinkling that fairy dust everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and it you know, takes really, and it takes a lot of energy. Yeah, it does. It really does. Um, before we go forward, I want to I want to read the question to you. This is back about you're talking about this device, right? 
how mm -hmm. would there be concrete information available that the device was in fact safe? Is this something that's been out for a while and studied? I don't understand. Oh, certainly. There's, there are devices that are modern world devices, um, but we would actually hearken back to the pyramids themselves. So when it, when it comes to understanding, um, certainly there is a lot of uh, the world now that doesn't have an understanding of how things in ancient times worked. Certainly it's not, it's not um, wide open information available to the masses any more than um, the languages are at this time which is an interesting correlation if you think about it. Um, because really, um, it's interesting because we're looking at the um, the intermingling of information that should be available and sometimes isn't always common knowledge, okay? We look at these things and, and oftentimes people want they want this proof, they want this fact, right? They want this fact, they want to know, I want the science behind it. You and I have spoken on other shows uh, about the differences between information, science, and then the intuitive things. You know, it, go, it goes back to the, the question actually, I think, probably goes back to something similar to what we were speaking of earlier. I'm not trying to avoid the question because in fact, the answer in the scientific terms is yes, the chi field is a very widely used field. <laughs> there are chi devices that are on the market today. Um, there are uh, different scientific studies that have been done. If you want to use the word scientific, I, I just hesitate to even use that word. But I, I, it's usually when people want proof, this is what they're looking for is science, right? Right. So whether it's safe or not, well, this is the field that your body works on. This is what gives us life. This is what gives us creation. This is what gives us the spark of life. So if you want proof of spirituality or you want proof of the soul, I'm sure that probably I'm not going to give it to you tonight. But this is what's the name. Um, and again, it also goes to... Um, it also goes to the fact that um, what I was speaking about, in fact, giving these sessions out so that people can experience it for themselves. Experience it for themselves. Because when people want, you know, to to have proof of something, there's no better proof than having the own experience, right? Exactly. I mean, seriously, your own experiences are your best uh, barometer, measurement, Um whatever you want to call it, proof, if you will, right? Sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to explain to people that you're getting a little garbly there, so uh, if it comes down to it, we may have to have you turn your video off, um, but we'll, we'll have you just kind of sit and see what happens, and if not, then we'll, if it doesn't clear up, then we'll just go ahead and have you remove your video portion of it and we'll just do it by audio only so far it looks like it's okay okay so um the the healing um techniques that you do are that you're actually what you're doing is you're stepping into somebody else's space because they've invited you in um i want to kind of talk a little bit about integrity here because there's there's a lot of people out there that don't have integrity. They'll step into your space and they'll, you know, just kind of rip through it and do whatever they want and say whatever they want. And it hmm. can leave you feeling really violated. You know, you feel awful. You don't feel better. You feel awful. That's somebody who's or something mm -hmm. that stepped into your space that you didn't give permission to be there or you didn't want to be there. Or you are uncomfortable not feeling safe or uh, secure about it to begin with. So the people that ask you and they come forward to you, you then are allowed kind of a doorway, so to speak, that opens up, that allows you to see what, what it is that you are meant to see. And I think that's the most interesting portion about the, the psychic ability here, or the psychic portion of all of this, because it doesn't just have one little uh, compartment. It has a whole bunch of compartments that are devised of this word that we're using as psychic. Um, you talked about different um, 
em- emblems or not that wasn't the word what was the word you used uh, yep. logos I, yep. I, yeah logos icons that show up around people um, that in itself is a trigger mechanism for whatever it is that you're supposed to see that is that's there for you and you are the one that is able to go in there and go okay this is what this is and this is what this I need to do this I need to do that then you may find yourself someplace else and you may find them actually looking at the physical form going, oh, my gosh, you've had an injury to your shoulder or whatever. Again, it's a, it's part of being psychic, but it's also honing in what is capturing your attention. And when you are seeking, when somebody steps forward and says, Tobias, I want you to look at, at you know this about me. Well, then you're coming in and you're looking at it and you're saying, Show me where do I need to go? What is it do I need to see? Because you're not going in there going, well, this is, I'm going to go in here and do this. That's not what you're doing. You're going there. Oh, no. And you're always saying, hey, what do I, where do I need to go? What is it that this person needs to see? What is it that I need to see in order to give this information to the person so that they can, because the healing process in and of itself isn't a complete process in the moment that we're doing it. It goes on. What yeah. we've done is open up the door. We've said, this is what we're doing. This is what we've done. And that person goes on and they they begin to gather more and more strength or whatever it is that they're gathering in order to keep that process going. So you said that very well when you said, look, it's an ongoing process. Everything that we're doing is an ongoing process, our evolution. Absolutely. And, you know, I, the thing is, I, I, I love the questions that arise out of things like this uh, sometimes uh, because, really, it gives people, people need to try these things themselves, right? Now, again, it, it goes back to the fact that people have to experience from the, for themselves. And one of the stories, I, I don't know if I've ever told this story on your show before or not, but I'm going to just touch on this briefly. I don't even like bringing it up because it kind of, you know, it's, it's sort of behind me. But the fact is, is, many years ago, I had a very serious spinal injury, okay? And and I broke my neck in two spots. Um, I was out of commission for many, many years in a very, very sorry way. And one of the things that was the bane of my existence, it was, the, it was just one of the additional horrible things from a spinal injury, was the fact that even if I was sitting in the middle of the yard in 90 degree weather in the sunshine i was frozen i was bone cold i was bone wow. cold like when you have the flu and yep. you're just bone cold and you can sit in a hot bath or hot shower and it still doesn't really warm you it's a sick cold feeling i experienced that for at least a couple of years every single day okay and then and then one day it was actually one night, it was actually Jack came to me on screen to do some, some acupuncture on you. And it was when I was just me, it was when I had just met Jack. It was very early on when I had just met Jack. And I laughed, I rolled my eyes in my head and I said, well, you're 2,000 miles away. I think that would be great, but how are you going to do that? Okay. He said, oh, I'll use my crystal. He said, I'll use my crystal. I said, ha, 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 go ahead, try it. I absolutely, I had been in such a severe state with, with suffering with that for so long, I absolutely did not think anything would help me, especially from a distance like that, okay? So he worked on me 20 minutes. I didn't feel anything physically as he worked on me that night. And, you know, it's funny, it's, it's engraved into my head. It was 9 p.m. to 9:20 p.m. that night. Years and years ago, I mean, minutes. That's on me. And I woke up, and he used his crystal, a crystal very much like this one, a specifically cut crystal. And I woke up the next day, and you know, I did not feel cold that day. And then two days passed, and then I thought, well, this is just ridiculous. A week passed, a month passed, a year passed, and I'm telling you right now, I have never felt that since that night. So when it comes to having proof of these things, we need our own experiences, and that is 
the one experience that absolutely set me on the path that I went on for several, several years and the path that I continue on today. Because that is what, those are the types of things that I want people to experience. Real, real effects from something that, that they may not understand, but, but that are something that science can't even explain to them, right? Absolutely. So let's do this. Um, we keep losing you. You're garbly. Can you just turn your camera off for a while, and then uh, absolutely. Then Brian will let us know when your bandwidth is strong enough again to turn back on the camera, uh, because the information is important, and we don't want it to go away. We want people to absolutely. be able to hear it. Did that make a difference for the bandwidth? Um, well, you don't sound garbly at this point. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Brian's saying good. Good job. There we go. Excellent. Perfect. So let's let's talk a little bit about that that experience that you had because this is important for people to recognize. You made a very bold statement when you said, "I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel nothing." Yet, right. you woke up the next day and things were different. And I think that's the misnomer yeah. that people have is that they think that when they have a session done, that when they walk out of that session, that they should be, quote, unquote, cured or feel better or feel something. That isn't necessarily the way the energy works. I have found it actually to be quite the opposite, that sometimes you yeah. can feel it. But what happens more than not is that the subtlety of that energy goes to work because it's intelligent. It knows what it's supposed to do. It knows what you told it to do or directed it to do. The other person yes. um, was ready for it, even though you may not have told Jack, look, I'm ready for this. Somewhere in, in your heart of hearts, in your soul, your soul is going, it's time for you to heal now, Tobias. And so it allowed that energy to come in and it healed you. And you began getting better and better and better, and you continue to grow and become better as the years go by. Because it never not works. You allow that right. to come in. And I also believe that when we have these experiences, it also is a catalyst for our own opening to who we really are. That began a whole process for you yeah. to become more – it works on many levels. We think – we think that, oh, I just need my neck to feel better or I just don't need to feel cold anymore. But that energy says, okay, well, we're going to do that for you, but we're also going to do some other things and you're going to become more whole. Absolutely. And this energy, this energy, I understand that people don't really usually understand what it's all about. And and honestly, I, I wish I could even put it in a nutshell and I can't even begin to because because it literally took me years and years and years and years of study and experience, continual experience to really understand it. And boy, do I understand it now. And, and so, I mean, even to try to put it into a nutshell, I keep saying, look, this is what the pyramids did. They're energy devices. They give a type of energy. They give energy to, to affect reality, whether that reality be healing or creating things into a physical existence. Like, uh, so, like, literally endless types of, of manifestation. A pyramid is a manifestation energy device, okay? So when we talk about chi or we talk about Jack using his crystal to manifest health or, or something happening in my body, it's really the same thing. It's really the same thing. It's the same as the, the Asian people do when they did, did acupuncture thousands of years ago. And um, still doing it? And it's still doing it today and and the fact that i use a, a crystal specifically cut to the specifications that were created by marcel vogel back in the 80s um just simply means that i'm using a tool that actually works um there are there are specific criteria that need to be met for something to work really sufficiently okay um I, I mean, I could get into the whole crystal thing. I mean, with a, a regular quartz crystal, it's a natural quartz crystal grown out of the earth, not cut in any way. It's going to record and hold information, right? And it certainly will continue to record information about its environment. It will transmit that information to the person that's in its field. We're talking about the quantum field again. Um, but when it comes to a specific cut, 
a tool like that I showed you a few minutes ago with this crystal. This is what Marcel Vogel um, researched back in, in the 80s. And Marcel Vogel um, was actually the senior research scientist for the computer company IBM. Right. Um, so he created, he was one of the creators of the liquid crystal displays that we use right now that almost everybody is looking at right now, their televisions, their computers, their tablets, their iPhones. He also created himself the coating that is on CDs and DVDs because that is a crystalline coating that literally records information, okay? So when we're talking about things that seem very magical and mystical such as crystals, um, what Marcel Vogel ushered into our world in this time period is the science behind it, right? So to not believe that a crystal could have any effect on healing your body would be sort of the same thing as not believing that we could record something onto a CD and play it later. Um, right. Not only that, but, but the hard drives inside of our computers hold terabytes of information. And they are based on the same crystalline technology. So when we talk about uh, using healing with our mind and a crystal as a tool, it's nothing new. In fact... It may be outrageous to most people in this world, but this is something, again, you know, I talk about activating your ancient past or, or ancient knowledge or connecting to your ancient knowledge. This is what was used for time infinitum <laughs> um, in the past, but now in our world, in the current world, people look at it and do what I did when Jack said that to me that night. I roll my eyes. Well, people usually roll their eyes. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Look at this guy waving his crystal wand around like a crazy man. But really, there's a huge science behind it, um, mostly with Marcel Vogel, um, who is unfortunately not with us anymore, but he has left a legacy, and he certainly was uh, instrumental in the things that I learned. Um, and again, although it's just one part of what I learned and I have experienced and used as tools, um, they all sort of connect to one another because whether even if it's, Okay, so even when we're talking about psychic or intuitive abilities and the energy, the quantum field between them, what's happening in our right brain, what's happening in our vision, in our inner mind, um, it's the same type of energies as, as a, the chi field. It's a, a, the same type of uh, enhancement, the energy that is, is recorded through the crystals and enhanced through the crystals. So again, Vogel would teach, you know, look, how do you record something onto a hard drive? You apply a small electrical charge, small electrical impulse onto it, and that literally records the information. We all know that this works. We all use our computers. We, we all use CDs, DVDs, and things like this. We absolutely don't doubt that that works. We don't, most of us don't have a clue how the hell it works, but we know it works, okay? It's no different. I'm telling you right now, it's no different with a quartz crystal in your hand. So Marcel Vogel, uh, just, just to give a little bit more background about how that works, we do not plug this crystal into the wall. We don't stick it into a hard drive reader. We literally hold it in our hand, and it's connected to that quantum energy field that we were talking about, Rebecca. It's right. connected to our energy field. And when I say energy... It's not just energy that's, you know, oh, sure, ha, 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 like a spiritual energy. It's literally electricity as well. This is what energy is. So when we, when we learn through study and practice with the right tools such as this, that we can literally connect, when we learn how to connect it with our mind, again, our brain uses electricity to function. We know this because we see ECGs and such of our brain waves and flashing and with different thoughts and different thought patterns. We know the different parts of brain is electrically stimulated naturally. Our heart uses electricity, which is energy, of course, to pulse. It's not just a physical mechanism. It's just not, it's not just a physical pump. It literally uses electricity within our bodies. So when we use a crystal such as this, as Marcel Vogel taught, we're actually using our breath to create that small, tiny electrical impulse that will record information into this hard drive that we're holding in our hand, the crystal. So when I say we use our breath, we literally do as he taught, 
and we pulse breath out of our nose. It's simple as this. A sharp pulse of air through the nose literally creates, when you're connected to the crystal in your field, a tiny electrical impulse. And Marcel Vogel is the science behind it. He created and studied this deeply. And he had put out all sorts of information in science, real science, about how this actually works. Okay? So, I mean, there is information out there. There is real, valuable, true information out there that describes things that can be endlessly helpful to everybody in this world um, that is similar to the things that we would, would have used and did use in the ancient past. But again, another topic that you and I spoke of recently, Rebecca, is the fact that there is so much information out there. There is so much information about different subjects that certain groups and certain people don't want us to know, certain practices that people don't have all the information for, so it gets watered down. It gets muddled up over time, right? Sometimes it's intentional. Well, you know what? I think many times it's intentional that the information is watered down so that people can't really tell uh, what they can trust or what would actually work, right? And well, that's... So Actually, that's the biggest portion of all of this is that it's it, there is a lot of intentional deception, um, a lot of intentional, um, um, I don't know, hiding, I guess is the better way of saying that. Um, there's a lot of that that goes on, and that's because there's power in that knowledge. Yes, absolutely. There is a huge power, and the power, it's a power that they don't want the balance, losing the balance of. So, I mean... I mean, we all know something about the pharmaceutical businesses and the power they wield, right? So can you imagine some turkey like Tobias coming along again? It, it, it reminds me of what I was talking about with the languages in the, in the Tower of Babel. Thousands of years later, in stumbles Marcel Vogel, in stumbles, you know, Tobias with his crystal. Oh, look, this works. You know, really, I think that that is the danger because... The pharmaceutical companies don't want, you know, we, they don't want the balance to, to, to tip in anybody else's favor but themselves. And unfortunately, this is the truth of the corporatocracy that we live in. Um, certainly, um, it reminds me of your, your guest on Monday, Mar, or Jim Mars, was talking about how these things work. And it's just yeah. a reality we must face, right? But at the same time, that's why I get so excited about the things that I've learned over the years and the things that I practice every single day, not just on myself, but with people all over the world. Right. Because they work. They yeah, work. They, so, they do. And they, and they work every single day. Like, it, you know what? So, okay, let's talk again about the fact that I rolled my eyes when I first heard that I was going to get healed from that horrible effect that I had in my body, okay? I understand I understand when people roll their eyes. Remember, I roll my eyes. But when I see people, and people say, I want the proof. Again, we get back to the proof. When people see the proof and they feel something tangible, even if they can't explain how it works, that is the proof. And I see this every single day. You know, I, I mean, even two weeks ago, I remember one of my clients saying, look, the day after she said, look, I feel like you've broken me out of a prison. And when I hear things like that, it brings, it literally brings tears to my eyes and not to get yeah. all mushy or anything, but it's a big deal to me. Oh, it's get a mushy. big deal. Absolutely. It's, well, it's a big you're... deal. Yes, that's the connection. That's the connection. Yeah. And when people literally say to you, you have changed, you changed my life. Like, I don't even know what to think about that, except I'm so humbled. I'm so humbled. So, I mean, these are the things that, I mean, surely people can understand even more so why I, I'm, I, you know, push myself out there sometimes and I talk about these things even in, in face of criticism many times because I know a lot of stuff that most people don't even think works, but it does, right? As long as you know you know, the specifics, and, and, and really these are the things that I not only connect with people with, but, you know, I would like to teach this more as well, right? And I do here and there, but, I mean, this is stuff, this is a big deal to me it, it, because well, it's reality. 
you know what? It should be a big deal to a lot of people. And, you know, let, let's face it. Everyone everyone has a, a place on this planet. Everyone has a, a, a way of being on this planet. But there's been so many that have been hoodwinked, usurped by those that didn't want this information to come out that um, that they become to accept it as normal, right? Well, normal is what we create, not or what is created for us, right? So the normal thing is is to run to the doctor and get a pill or a shot or something, right? Or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, right? That's not really normal. We doctors weren't always around, right? But you know, there's there's a there's a lot to be said about some of these old ancient techniques. You know, um, some of the things that I do are are old ancient techniques, just like what you're talking about, the crystals. You know, they they are such bad. If if you could see my room, I got crystals everywhere. I got all kinds Mm -hmm. of candle crystals and crystal balls and (laughs) crystal pyramids and healing wands and, you know, stones of all kinds. You know, it's just because they're they're soothing, they're energetic uh, without making you agitated. Uh, they they feed you when you're hungry and you don't even know it. And I'm not talking about food hungry. When your body mm-hmm. needs something, there it's always there. It will help you, but you just have to pick it up. I, you know, I I I'm going to plug myself here for just a second. It's something I've been wanting to talk to you about, and I haven't done it. And yeah. I haven't I haven't even talked about it at all. And I don't know why, but I'm I'm going to talk about it tonight because it begins in the new year. Um, I, too, have been working for the last year or so. I feel better now than I have in the last five years, I think, put together. So this last year of healing and working and, and really trying to find some some different outlets for my own self, I, I always had this recurring vision um, for as long as I can remember of being in this crystal room, this room of crystal. And it, the whole wall is crystal and it's illuminated, but there's no lights. Um, and there's these, um, we would call it a slab, but it, it's a it's a crystal bed, basically. And you get on this crystal bed and, and everything happens and it changes and the colors change and you can feel the energy soar through you and this and that and another thing. So um, it wasn't too long ago, um, it was this year, when the guides came to me and said, well, here is what you're actually experiencing. So see, I've been you know, having this vision now for 35 years, didn't know what it was. Well, it was called an Atlantis healing chamber. Mm -hmm. It was something that was born out of Atlantis. They used to put people in there. You could go into this healing chamber, and it would literally reconfigure your energy system to put it back into balance. So that's the place that I always went to visit, and I didn't know what it was until... They identify, 35 years later, they have to identify it for me because they haven't done it this whole time. I'm always inside when I, when I, in, I don't ever walk up to it, but now I walk up into it and I can walk into it and I can see what it is from the outside and where it is. It's an absolutely magical place. So I'm putting together and it's, it's on my website under the classes. It's called the Atlantis Healing Chamber and DNA Recoding in which it uses crystals and it uses frequency, it uses sound, all these things that when you're laying on this crystal bed, all these different things will happen and it actually gives to you what your body needs and requires, not what somebody else is giving to you, but what it's, you you know, your body goes in there and says, I want to go in and see what, you know, heal myself, I want to feel better, I want to be this, I want to be that, whatever it is. Go in there and you lay on that and anything can happen. And it's all done with crystals and frequencies and and light and sound. Music sometimes plays for me when I'm in there. This very ethereal music, by the way, that isn't anything that I've ever heard of on this earth. I couldn't even begin to replicate it because I can't carry a tune anyway. You know, when I sing, I make small babies cry. So (laughs) I just don't do it. (laughs) But anyway, I, 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 uh, I... Ask people if they are interested to go there, if they're interested in in, uh, attending one of these classes, is to write me at journeyswithrebecca at yahoo.com, and I'll put you on the list, and it won't happen until probably the end of January or into February um, to get some people to come in, and and I will be teaching this and sharing this information with people. So um, it's right along the same lines as what 
what you're talking about with the crystals and it's just it's just time it's it's past time mm -hmm. for all of us to be doing more of this kind of work instead of relying on you know corporate america and yeah. all of that and it does it's 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 just past time i think oh it really is you know what um so fascinating to hear you explaining what you're doing with the class because honestly one of one of a huge experience that I had actually was in one of your classes so many years ago and it was your past life regression something something class it's, it's a timeline it's a timeline that's it yes to the timeline class yes and I still teach that oh this is what happened I mean I, there were several people in that in that that class at that time and you um, guided us through to these different places, you know, to you let us go where you just, you were there sort of overseeing the whole thing. And, and, and then you took turns with each participant in the class saying, okay, what's happening? Are you okay? Look what you see or what's happening. And then they'd verbalize through the call what they're seeing and experiencing, right? And you, you sort of help put it into perspective for people. Absolutely fascinating. But my whole experience Believe it or not, during that class was I was in this massive city in my mind. It was dark, and then suddenly out of the sky comes this massive big crystal. It breaks in half above my head, and this loud voice in my head says, You are the crystal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't even know if you remember that, but that happened during the one class I took with you years ago. Isn't it funny that it's coming up now, all of the crystal things? Oh, wow, that is so awesome. That is just so awesome. It really, that's it, just too cool for itself. <laughs> totally. And you know what? I, I understand now, yeah, we are crystals. Because honestly, just like Marcel Vogel putting a coating on the on the CDs or, or Masaru Emoto, taking liquid crystal of water and programming emotion into it, our bodies are full of liquid, and that is a liquid crystal. They have structure within them, okay? Yes. So when we, you know, when I'm told you are the crystal, absolutely. And when we talk about what you were saying earlier about people being in your field or people being, you know, feeling, you know, getting, getting in your space, right, that's exactly what's happening. We are transmitters. We are walking antenna in this world. And I realize that most, uh, a lot of people can't consciously feel this and, and sense it in the same way as we're talking about. But they, they, do, they do have the effects of this, whether it's positive or negative, of other things entering their field, right? So, I mean, this is, this is a huge deal that science and medicine and and most of those subjects, and they don't really address these things. So isn't it something that, you know, throughout all the time in the history, the ancient reality of, of what, what healing mechanisms from the Atlantic chambers to, that you described to things that, you know, all of these crystalline devices and, and, and realities like this, isn't it something that even now, or especially now, we live in a society and a world where all of these other mechanisms say, no, this is what's real. Right. And they look at, they, in large part, they look at what we're talking about and, ah, ha, 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 how ridiculous, look at these crazy people, right? But when, in fact, they're not usually healing through their mechanisms, but we're actually healing through ours. So this is a beautiful thing. And, and again, I, I'll just repeat myself, it's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> It's a really big deal. And when we stop and think about the pharmaceuticals that we're on, uh, you know, they don't they don't cure anything. They, no. they don't they absolutely there's no there's no curing of it at all. Um, they they and honestly, there are times when we all do need the pharmaceuticals. I'm not disavowing that. Um, you know, that's that would be unfair because I think there's a place for all of it on this planet absolutely uh that one shouldn't be considered better than the other because it's more mainstream than the other um i really don't I, I i honestly believe that pharmaceuticals do have their place but it's gotten to the point of being ridiculous that you can go to the doctor and saying well i had a crying jack so okay you're on depression so you're you're depressed so i'm going to go ahead and 
uh, you know, give you a drug, and then they give your your crying jag a, a some kind of a new new name. <laughs> so now it becomes a disease, right? And somebody said yeah. that I, I did read that the other day where um, <clears throat> the medical profession has now decided that any emotion a human being feels that there's a um, disease uh, associated with it, with every emotion, and that you can go and get a pill for that. <laughs> What does that yeah. tell you? It tells yeah. me that somebody's trying to turn off your humanity. They are. <laughs> and they're trying to disconnect you from source, whatever that source is. Call it the field if it makes you feel more comfortable. But that sure. field out there, if, if you go traipsing around and if you can start finding it, if you can find that field, oh, my gosh, the world just opens up, does it not? Absolutely. Because, oh, absolutely, because it is the rest of the world that most people are missing, right? I don't like to even, I hate to even say that most people are missing because I would love for everybody to see it all, right? But it's yeah. just not the case. I would like for that to open up in, in the right natural ways. But absolutely, there's a whole world out there. And isn't it funny that the things that they would like, they would have people believe that are ridiculous or insane or, or mental illness, um, such as, you know, talking to aliens or <laughs> thinking, <there's, laughs> thinking you're psychic. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that if you really take a step back and look at these things, that actually um, we're creating some very big success with these things, and it is the, is, it is the modern world uh, philosophies, such as uh, much of medicine, uh, that is, is it actually not healing, it's doing the opposite, right? Yeah. Um, again, let me just acknowledge, though, that there are, there are people all over this world within that field, without a doubt, that only want to help people. They only they, Their greatest desire is a passionate need to help people. So I never, never am slamming what they do. Exactly. Um, I'm just saying, look, this is the way it is. And uh, um, hopefully, uh, you know, even as time goes by, I see more people in those fields expanding and opening up to these other modalities and things, right? So, absolutely, um, absolutely. My my chiropractor was a good one because he doesn't. He's not a bone cruncher, uh, but he was a, a guy that used to have a, an acupuncturist in his office and uh, believes in meditation and all of that stuff. I mean, it, he's just fabulous, fabulous man. Uh, some of the doctors I know, uh, actual MDs that I have run across in my in my time doing the work that I do. Even dentists. I've even had dentists as. And and I've actually had psychiatrists, dentists, and doctors, MDs, um, and psychologists that have come to me for different reasons, and they believe in this other world that, you know, of course, they can't talk to their colleagues about it, and they, they, they come right out and tell you, well, they don't believe that, but, hey, I believe if you have a good, healthy diet, eat organic, stay away from the GMOs, you know, they're, they're talking about this stuff. That's what they practice themselves, and they're not the kind of person that when you walk in the office, the first thing to do is get their prescription pad out. Oh, no, yes. Yeah, you know, and isn't they, it a relief? It is, and it, it's, it's absolutely joyful to see that there is some kind of a, a meeting of the minds between the different worlds, and uh, you talk about chi and ki. I want to talk about that a little bit. Anybody that's a martial artist, uh, they, they take uh, tai chi, or uh, karate, any of that. Um, they practice the art of meditation and chi and ki and running energy through the body and how to uh, quiet the mind and listen. And there again, to also to quiet the mind so it's free of thoughts. So you're only sensing and feeling from the other side of the brain. The one side that is connected to what we call the field, what we've been referring to as the field tonight. So it's it's a practice that's been going on since ancient times, and I I truly believe it's just um, it it's 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 beyond useful. I think it's something that is beneficial. There's, they're even taking some of these classroom kids, these children that are as, as early as kindergarten and teaching them meditation practices. And they have found with these children, they've done these case studies that started out in kindergarten and they may be in eighth grade by now. And they do these meditation in their classes, classrooms at least once a day, that there's no violence, there's no bullying. These children do well in school. They're better adjusted. They're happier children. There's all, I mean, it's a scientific dis, um, study that they've been doing on children that meditate. 
So there's something to be said about that. There's something to be said about that unseen world, for sure. Oh, absolutely. And every single bit of it, uh, history is filled with. It is absolutely filled with. I mean, we've talked about Egyptian times and, and times far before that tonight. But you know what? Look at all the different places. There's, there's, there's talks about people that, that back in Salem when there were witches, you know, uh, the big, you know, I mean, that's one example. There's, you talk about magical things happening within old, old buildings and, and spiritual things happening in churches and, and, you know, people, it, it's very difficult in, in so many cases for people to sort of draw back together how even things that are in front of us all of the time work. So, you know, let's just, even if we take a walk through our city and you look at the structures and, and the buildings around you, you will see absolute direct links to the things that we're talking about tonight with symbology and energy and, and the mechanics of how these things work. Okay? I mean, even the steeple on a church, historically, yes. this the, the reason for this is it literally is, I mean, think about it. Look, there's a steeple on the end of my crystal. Right. This draws energy. What would this energy be used for? Well, in, in the best case scenario for healing and for manifesting, you know, something that's healthy for the group, for the people, or the, 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 the mass of people, right? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I don't believe I see all of the time that this doesn't happen. <laughs> this is not <laughs> the way the energy is being put to use in the world today. However, these things are around us still, and this is why they work in the same way. Again, look at my crystal. This is a pyramid at the top. It's the same angles as the Great Pyramid at Cheops. This is why it works. You know what? Another thing I just saw recently, I saw a Russian, uh, a Russian scientist uh, with a pyramid about the size of, well, maybe me, five or six feet in a room in a house. I don't know what it was made out of. It looked see-through uh, parts of it. And he was taking a magnetometer and he was showing that the, the, uh, the magnetic field is reduced dramatically in the in the field of the pyramid and so you may say okay so what does that mean how does that benefit us how is that put to use the one or two examples he gave is that within that field of that pyramid radio waves microwaves cellular waves they disappear they disappear so i mean most of us know that it's not good to have all of these these Wi-Fi signals and everything going through our minds and our houses and our bodies. I think we can all acknowledge that, that it's detrimental to health. It's not, it's not beneficial for our health. So just looking at this example, you have this, this, sci this Russian scientist just showing something very, I mean, it's not, it's not news. It's, it's, it's a well-known uh, fact that this shape of this pyramid will literally give a protective environment, a, a protective field against these things that can harm you. So it's just one other scientific example of things that mm, most people don't know how they work, but they are there, and sometimes science does know how they work. They just need to put, be put to use more in our everyday lives, right? And we don't have to depend on a specialist or or professionals for some of these things, you know. Maybe we can create our own pyramid, you know, out of, I don't know, copper pipes like some people well, do. Let, let, and that reminds me of a story. I want to back you up with that scientific uh, idea there of the pyramid. There was a lady that um, came to Kansas City years ago, and she was there for a couple of years putting on these demonstrations. Um, they made a pyramid out of copper pipes and they set this pyramid down and um, they it was like for these three-day conferences and stuff that was going on they would put an egg on the inside of that pyramid uh, one that was broken open right so it was a raw egg in a dish and they put it inside the pyramid and then they took another one and they set it outside the pyramid in a dish just like the other one and after three days, of course, the one that was sitting outside the pyramid was just gross. You can just well imagine mm -hmm. what it was like. And the one inside the pyramid looked like it had just been freshly cracked in there. Yes. Uh, 
and it was also people would go in there. Uh, there was a lady that was coughing. She had, was having a coughing fit, and uh, the guy grabbed her and put her inside of that pyramid, and within a, like less than 30 seconds, her coughing quit, and he left her in there for about 10 minutes. When she come out, she didn't cough at all again, and she had allergies really bad to everything in there, and she never coughed again. In that space. Now, whether she did later on, who knows? But while she was mm-hmm. there walking around, it all went away. There's something to be said about just building that stretch. And there was no sides on this pyramid. It was just made out of the copper pipes. That's it. Yes, it is the, the, the shape of it and the angles. Mm-hmm. So here we have another example of the fact that the energy of the chief field made created that very real uh, physical change and difference in her in her body. Now, now, why does this work? Well, one of the big reasons, I mean, is that the chi field on this planet has been reduced for many different reasons that I won't get into <laughs> um, yeah, over time. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's a ten-hour conversation. That's for sure. So, so I mean, when we can take different tools, whether that be the crystal or organite or organ or or, uh, you know, chi machines even, uh, chi accumulators, organ accumulators. It's, it gives, it gives the, the force, the life force, because that's what it is, life force energy. It gives the body uh, the ability to sort of skip back into something with enough energy to boost what it would do naturally, which is heal, because it's natural to heal. It's unnatural to have illness. However, the illness usually accumulates and and, and, and continues because we literally don't have enough of that energy. And, you know, even going back to Wilhelm Reich and, and yeah. Franz Anton Mesmer, 150 years before Reich, they invented the orgone accumulators, which were devices that accumulated life force from its surroundings and, 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 and did the same thing. Yeah. They layered organic and metal, organic and metal, I believe it was, or something like that. Upon They even created boxes with layers of organic and inorganic uh, that they've realized accumulates this chi life force energy. They would lay people in them and the same effects as you described with the pyramid would happen. The same thing. Do we have doctor's offices that we can go in and lay in this chi box these days? No, unfortunately we don't. So I guess I guess that's sort of in many cases I think that's the same sort of uh, problem as with the pharmaceutical companies. Well, we can still create these things are in, in our own environments in different ways, right? And right. Uh, this is sort of what we're talking about in, in learning and in trying to teach other people about uh, and want people to have these experiences, right? Exactly. Oh, it reminds, it reminds me of something else, a story I don't think I've ever told publicly, but you were talking about um, the Atlantean healing crystalline chamber. Now, one of I'm talking about uh, confirmations, right? Because I always say, you know, we need to have our own experiences to really understand something's real. One of one another one of my early on experiences was literally being taken out of my body in my astral form. Again, here's some more words that most of the world would roll their eyes at, but taken out of my body in my astral form to a place that was actually a healing chamber as well. It was actually, you know what, it wasn't even that fancy. It was an office in a different place with wooden walls, and there was literally a huge crystalline sphere hanging from the ceiling, like a chandelier hanging from the ceiling above a bed, right? I was put on this bed, and they said that what they're using the crystal for was to burn impurities out of my body and my blood, like... I don't even remember, just, you know, all the impurities from chemicals and things in our world, right? And, and, and let me just sort of substantiate here. I was not asleep. <laughs> it was more as though it was during a meditation, and, and it was not something that was imagined in my mind, although I, well, many people would think, oh, yeah, the guy's imagining things. Um, the reason I'm telling this story is because, again, you have to have these experiences. Again, so I said to the person that was running this device, I said, it was taking too long. I was actually getting bored. So I said to this person, you know, can't you turn it up or something? Uh 
And so <laughs> they literally said, oh, well, I, yeah, we could, we could make it more powerful, but I've never used it full power on anyone before. And silly me thinking, oh, well, who cares? You know, this isn't real. You know, my body's laying on my bed back home. This isn't real. What's it going to hurt me? So I said, yeah, please do. So they did. They turned this crystalline sphere to full power or whatever and, and zapped me for, I don't know, probably another 20 minutes or so. And in all honesty, the next morning when I woke up in my bed here, my eyes were burnt. My physical eyes were burnt. And not only that, but it took over a month before my eyes healed from being burnt. So people think that these things are imagination or, or don't work or whatever. I don't know. It's just, it's, there's so much that we, you know, we can't always conceive of, right? Um, so whether it's these crystals that we're talking about or, or, you know, again, all of the other subjects that are sort of associated, but sort of fringe, right? They're fringe subjects. Um, these, these are really, really important things, and they've been such a part of my life. I know they've been a, such a part of your life, Rebecca. And it, sometimes don't you sort of just sit back and think, wow, we kind of live in the twilight zone because, you know, we have these experiences. I mean, you talk to, to angelic beings and different types of other species, and, and certainly I do too, different times, although I usually try to avoid it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I mean, these things, you know, seem quite distant from the, the sort of the real, what we people would consider the real world, right? But, but that makes even more important and even more powerful um, – what I've been saying and what we've been talking about, and that is people need to try these things because they're not going to get the confirmations themselves. They're not going to get those confirmations unless they actually put a foot forward and try different things. I know so many people do. So many people do these things and try these things and, and, and have great skills in so many of these things. But the fact is, you know, the majority of the world still thinks it's just fantasy, right? Yeah, and, you know, you have to understand is the majority of the world doesn't, recognize uh shows like this and others or you know they don't use the internet in the same way they look up different things for different reasons but not in the way of looking at anything that isn't mainstream what we would call mainstream and we all know what mainstream has done it hasn't done us a whole lot of favors but i want to i want to share uh just a couple of more thoughts with people before we uh, get back to you and, and let you uh, share w whatever other information we didn't cover tonight. It's very, very important for each and every one of us to recognize that we are um, – we're – well, let's see. I think I probably just need to, to sit back on think on that for just a minute because I'm not quite sure. There was like 16,000 thoughts that just came in on what I wanted to share with people, and I got off on a tangent – and they took me someplace else, and so now I don't even remember where I was at. So I'm going to let you kind of go forward there, uh, Tobias. I'm sorry I sound a little discombobulated there. I promise I'm not on drugs. I promise, I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just have a lot of people when you said, and you talk to these different people, they all came in and started talking to me, and now I'm like, okay, I don't know what I was going with that. <laughs> You know what? You know, out of out of anybody in this world, you know, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I got interrupted. In my whole but thing it's that okay I was doing. because you know, you know what we'll do as you sort of collect that thought. I'm going to draw the five names of people okay. who have won these sessions. Yay. And let me just <laughs> and let me just say that um, I'm really busy, as most people are, over this sort of Christmas season and and um, the first part of January. So I will be connecting with these people that are the winners tonight um, and doing these sessions um, probably after the 15th of January in the new year. But let's draw the names literally out of the hat. The first yeah. winner is Kristen. I don't know if you can read that, but it's Kristen I. <laughs> Hi, Kristen I. Congratulations. <laughs> Second person is Mark O. Congratulations, Mark O. The third person, oh, I don't know these people. They must know me. Shayla M. Congratulations, Shayla M. The fourth person is cool. I know this one. Heather R. Congratulations, Heather R. 
That would be Heather R. in Portland, Oregon. And then the fifth person is actually Carl C. And I know Carl is in I know Carl is in Bellingham, Washington. So that's the five congratulations. I will be bugging Yay. you. I will be bugging you to give you your prizes at some point in January. Well, congratulations to each and every one of the of of the winners there for your sessions. They are just absolutely they have no idea what a treat they're in for. <clears throat> they really don't. Um I want to mention your or I want to go back to just before we wrap all this up tonight about the uh, what struck me was when you were talking about that everybody's got some kind of symbology around them when you look at them. Um, something shows up regardless of what that is. Now, when when you are looking at somebody in a, a, a symbol or an icon or whatever the case may be shows up, what does that usually do for you? Is it... Do you see the same things, or does everybody have something different? Well, you know, people can have similar things, and I'm sure that people could have the same things, but one of the things that never ceases to amaze me, and something that I've said so many times to different people, is that it's, never, it's, it's always something different. Like, like when I connect to somebody in that way, and I literally look, like I use that word a lot, like my friends around me, they know if I say, oh, you know, I'm going to look at something. That I mean, literally, with my. Oh, we lost him. I think we've lost Tobias temporarily. Um, he seems to be frozen on screen. I'm not getting any audio. Is that correct? Okay. Um, so we'll see if we can get him back on. And if not, um, we'll have to just kind of wrap this up. Um, I did want to make mention again real quick. Oh, we have lost Tim. Um, let's see if we can get him back for the uh, close of this. Let's see if we can do that. Let me see if I can get him back online here real quick, everyone. So bear with me. We certainly just don't want it to end like that. That's for sure if we can help it. Um, so we're calling him, and we'll see if he gets to – is if he's able to even – uh, connect with us. If not, then we will we'll close out the show. But I wanted to um, just reiterate to all uh, the the people that won uh, Tobias's um, little contest, I guess, if for lack of a better way of saying it, um, you really are in for a treat with Tobias and his uh, techniques. Um, it's absolutely going to be fabulous for you all, and I look forward to uh, hearing from Tobias about the. Um, I guess about the the uh, the progress and the process that you all went through. So that'd be really great. And we unfortunately are not able to get him back online. He does not look like he's able to come back online. I'll try it one more time here. And while I'm doing that, I also wanted to reiterate to everybody that uh, please to go to the website that's journeyswithrebecca.com. Make sure you sign up for the free newsletter there. Uh, the newsletter, by the way, is never shared with anyone. The list is not. None of the names, so you're not going to get any any other solicitations because you sign up. Um, so you can do that on the front page. It's usually throughout the rest of it. I have the archives that are also available to you um, for all the shows from, I don't know, I think I've got them all the way back from 2006 in there. Uh, some of them are even older than that. So there's a whole bunch of them in there that you could go back and listen to, Some maybe some of your favorite people. So please do that. Um, donations are always welcome. There's a donate button on the website as well. Um, every little bit helps. The book, The Great Revealing, is, you can also find that uh, on the website along with my uh, Intuitive Tarot uh, book along with the – it's a digital download as well as the digital downloads of the audio companion that goes with it. Um, remember that at The Great Revealing that uh, some of the proceeds will go back to Tobias. And we also would like to uh, draw attention to – uh, my engineer, Brian Onley, he has a Vimeo um, site where he has the Book of Man, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I urge everyone to go in there and take a look at that and, and read it, read the information. He's also got a blog, I think, as well uh, that he also contributes to. Um, again, that's my engineer, but he has a, a fabulous, fabulous 
pieces of audio information as well as written information on the Vimeo site. And, uh, of course, it, it, donations are always appreciated for his work and his dedication, his hard work. So please, please definitely go in there and check out The Book of Man uh, by Brian Onnelly. Um would be lovely. And uh, if you can give a little bit, that would be very helpful. Um, share the love, as we say. Share the love. And we, it's um, very unfortunate that we couldn't get Tobias on to say goodnight to all of you. I know he's, he's, he's really not feels good about that. I can tell you that he's such a sweetheart and such a loving, loving, generous person. So I look forward to having Tobias back on again sometime next year. Sounds like again a long time away. It's only a few weeks away. I want to wish to again take this chance and to thank each and every one of you for joining us and being a part of the show as well as Project Camelot. Uh, thank you so much, each and every one of you. I do wish each of you a very Merry Christmas and a most prosperous, healthy, happy new year. And with that, I'm going to say good night to each and every one of you until we meet again. Where will your life's journey lead you? Many blessings and good night, everyone.